Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 106. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for Chapter 11, click on the link below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Finance class section. Hey, uh, we're in Chapter 11. Uh, we talked about just the last two videos, calculating expected returns and standard deviation for a stock in a portfolio. Now, expected returns. We can even go look back over here. Uh, we expected with our calculations to earn this much on their portfolio. Back in ex uh, example one, for the stock we expected to earn a return of uh, 4.5 and 3.4. So what does expected mean? Well, since this is all about estimating for the unknown future, that's as best we can do. Is it going to be exactly this or exactly this? Highly unlikely. So what happens? We make these estimations. And then what happens? It's a stock, right? So some new information comes out. As soon as new unexpected information comes out, there's no way we could have known about it, right? So we didn't incorporate it into all of our estimates. So our expected uh, return is different than our actual return. Now here's our, our PowerPoint's expected return and actual returns. Do they always equal each other? And like never, right? So if new unexpected information comes out about publicly traded stocks, prices can change and expected returns can be different than actual returns. Let's look at an example in Excel. I'm on the sheet example three. New information, September 30th, 2004, Merck announced recall of Vioxx. Stock fell from 45 to 33 bucks in one day. So this was on September 30th, this was the day before, right? This was the close the day before. And here's what it ended on September 30th. So what's the change? So the begin at the, or the end amount divided by the begin at the beginning of the day minus one. So new information can change a stock price by 20, a drop of 27% in a single day. Yeah, that's an extreme example, but information, new unexpected information changes everything. All right, uh, new information and stock price that so we just uh, sh saw that example there. Unexpected new information, a surprise in essence, affects stock price up or down. What happens if the stock price of a gov of if the government announces lower than expected economic growth numbers? Right? If you listen to the radio or watch the news at all, business stuff, you know, you hear about this all the time. Some new government number comes out. And then in this case, you know, most stocks would tend to go down, right? So lower economic growth numbers, stocks tend to go down. What if Boeing, uh, what, what happens to Boeing stock if they get an unexpected new contract for planes or they were going to sign a contract and everyone expected you know 10 planes and all of a sudden now when they sign it and announce it it's 20 right the stock probably goes up how about unexpected announcement that Ireland and Spain credit rating went down so this is I'm shooting this in November almost December 2010 right that's the latest international news and uh, as soon as this comes out that you know, we already went through the, the Greece government debt problem. Now Ireland and Spain are in trouble. It's just rippling through. So what happened to the markets? The prices went down, right? People are scared. Not only if, if Ireland goes down, maybe Spain's next. And, and you know, now you're starting to get into to large economies. And what's going to happen to the currency euro, right? So this simple announcement just has ripple effects. And it's unexpected, right? People were cautiously... <laughs> Optimistic after Greece was sort of, uh, you know, helped out a bit, but this new information really caused a big splash. What about unexpected announcement that Boeing employee strike was not settled? So unexpected, right? They were on the verge of, you know, everyone expected this strike to be settled, and then all of a sudden it's announced, no, the talks have broken down. So then the, what happens? The stock probably shoots down. All right, expected information. Well, we were talking about unexpected, but announcements that do not contain new expected information should not affect stock price much, right? The inf and the way they usually talk about this is new information comes out and they're like, oh yeah, that's the st that stock or the stock market didn't move much because it's already, the information is priced in to the stock market or, or the particular stock. They also say, oh, that's already discounted into the stock price. So what happens if the stock price 
to what happens to stock prices if government announces low economic growth numbers, but everyone expected it? Well, nothing, right? That's why it's called expected return. We built all of our expectations about what we thought would happen. What happens to Boeing stock if they sign a new contract for planes, but it's exactly what everyone expected? Probably not much. Now, let's go back to this slide, right? Government, Boeing. Economic numbers, growth numbers, affects a lot of stocks. But this announcement about Boeing, right? It, it affected just their stock. So there's really two kinds of unexpected information. And still further, notice that this new information, if it's new and unexpected, it affects stock price. But expected information doesn't really uh, change it much. So that means that the risk of the new, new information means that really is the risk. Anything that's different than our expectations becomes the risk of the stock unexpected new information at the risk of holding the stock. But as we just noticed, there's two kinds of risk. There's market risk. Oh yeah, the market risk affects all the stocks. Announcements about GDP, interest rate, credit, uh, country credit rating changes. That's either called market risk or systematic, meaning the, this new announcement affects the whole system. Uh, and then there's the Boeing risk, right? Asset specific risk or unsystematic. It means it doesn't affect the whole system. So asset specific risk affects one, two, or a few stocks or a, for a certain sector, right? So Boeing example. What about a liability lawsuit? So all of a sudden, uh, a new lawsuit against a company and a product is announced. That'd probably make the stock drop, right? Or how about a new stock? So they this company announces a brand new stock, or a company has a credit rating downgrade. So not the whole, not a country, but an individual company. All of those are asset specific. Now we want to talk about these two types of risk, systematic and unsystematic. I usually call them market and asset specific. Um, what happens to these if you hold lots of stocks? So if we go over here to slide 13, portfolio of stocks. Portfolio just means, portfolio diversification is the word they use, is the inv investment in several different asset classes or types of stocks. And what this doesn't mean, it diversification is not just holding a lot of stocks, because what if you held 30 bank stocks? Are you diversified? So if uh, an asset specific or a sector specific uh, n new information comes out, right? Well, if it's about banks, then it's going to affect all of your stocks. So that's not really um, diversifying. However, if you own 30 stocks that span 30 different industries and sectors, then you're diversified. And what happens when you're diversified? Well, you can just imagine asset specific uh, announcements and new information. They're only going to affect a few stocks. So maybe a few stocks go down. But at the same time, on any given day, maybe a few other stocks go up in a different industry. So the idea that you hold a diversified portfolio with lots of different uh, stocks across different industries and sectors maybe will help us out in lowering our risks. So risks and portfolios of stocks. Holding a portfolio of different types of stocks lowers the asset-specific risk. And what happens is they tend to wash each other out. But it's never going to reduce the systematic risk or market risk. When people hold diversified portfolios of stocks, the true risk is the market risk. Huh. Therefore, market risk, systematic risk, is the only risk that is rewarded in terms of the financial markets. Now, there's some famous studies, and here's a table from our textbook. All they did was they, they took different stocks. They held one, and two, and four, and six, and all the way up to 1,000, right? And they measured the standard deviation, um, or the, the risk, the volatility of the stocks. And sure enough, look at this. When you hold one stock, the volatility is 49. Two starts to drop six, eight, and again, the idea is as you uh, get more stocks, right? When one goes down, the other one stays neutral, it goes up, right? So the asset-specific or unsystematic risks kind of wash out. So as you get down to some number around 30, right? It's down to 20 already, and then as you get up more and more and more and more for, for this particular study, you know, it just approaches some number like 19. And here's a chart of it, right, straight from our textbook. 
this is number of stocks in your portfolio. This is the average annual standard deviation, which is our measure of risk. The more stocks, but it approaches right about here and somewhere. It gets pretty close to you know 20, but about 30 stocks, right? And so what that means is in the financial markets, it's assumed that people hold portfolios of stocks. And so therefore, the only risk that's going to be rewarded is market risk or systematic risk or non-diversifiable risk because you can't diversify away from a, an, a new announcement, an unexpected announcement that's going to affect the whole system or the whole market. Now, <clears throat> the next logical step is how in the world do you measure systematic risk? Because if we could do that, then we could come up with a measure to figure out what the return should be. Beta. What's beta? Oh, beta. Beta is a measure of market risks, risk, systematic risk. Um, it just tells us how much systematic risk there is in a particular stock or portfolio. Now, in this textbook, they kind of just tell you that's it, beta. Beta of 1. What they say is the beta of 1 implies the asset has the same systematic risk as the overall market. So if you pick a stock with 1, and the market's going up by a certain amount, then this um, particular stock is going to be correlated with that. It's going to go up. Now, you could have a beta less than 1, and this implies that the asset has less systematic risk than the overall market. Above 1 implies more systematic risk. Now, again, they don't tell you how to calculate this, um, but I'm going to show you. Here it is. And by the way, this just says, exactly one. That means your stock is average. It's just like the market. It's the average systematic risk. They say uh, below one or greater than one. It also can be negative, which means your stock moves in the completely opposite direction of the market. Now here's our example, I, and we're going to see how to do this over in Excel. It requires that we do linear regression and do the least squared method to calculate the slope of a line. What happens is you can, in Excel, do it quite easily without doing least squared method. But you you plot. Here's I'm going to do Whole Foods Market International, WFMI. And I'm simply going to take all of the stock data for this stock and plot it against some big index like the S&P. So here's S&P weekly returns for the lat. Oh, it should say last. And here's another lat over here. Uh, but this is a Whole Foods market, and so I plotted it. Now notice, this is an XY scatter, which means there's an independent variable and a dependent variable. So we go out this much and out this much. You can see there there is some relationship. It, so Whole Foods markets tends to go, you know, when the market's going up, this one tends to go up. Uh, and when we plot this and find the slope of this line, that will tell us beta. Now, for this particular example, we're going to see that the beta of Whole Foods Market is 1.08. Now, I'm going to uh, show you how to calculate it in the next video. Um, and we'll see how to do a port portfolio beta also. So in this video, we just are uh, learning about New information, unexpected information, it can be either systematic or unsystematic. Uh, the systematic is the one that's rewarded in the market, and we measure it with beta. Okay, in our next video, we'll see how to calculate beta and do a couple other calculations with beta. All right, see you next video.